Hello, John Bloodworth, Gentleman Crafter here with another Scan and Cut Saturday. This week I'm going to be showing you some different styles of shadow layers applied to text, and there's very different reasons for each of them. So I'm first going to add some text. That's using the text tool. And obviously I am using the downloaded version of Canvas Workspace. Most of these should be um, possible in the online version as well. Uh, some of the later ones, though, you will need the Layers tab in order to uh, work around some things. So, the first one that we're going to do is on just the basic text, and we're going to do a basic solid shadow layer. So we use the Offset tool from the Edit menu, choose the spacing, send the direction outwards, Leave the corner type and the original line set as they are, and make sure that box at the bottom is selected. Now the shadow layer always tends to be put on top, so when I apply a color fill, you'll see that it blots out the text from underneath. That's fine, we can rearrange the text in the Layers tab to uh, visually make a difference. In terms of cutting out, obviously you would cut them separately anyway. So that's a solid shadow layer. Now what about uh, an open shadow layer? And that's basically a shadow layer that includes the uh, landlocked areas in the middle of letters like the O. All we do there is change that selection uh, that says about selecting around the outside edge. What you will notice, however, is that this new shape, this new shadow layer, is made up of various different shapes sat on one on top of the other. So when you apply a color fill, it actually applies the fill to the central shape as well. You can get around this by basically uh, subtracting the smaller shape from the larger shape. If the, sh if the shape is too small, like in the center of the A that you saw, then basically you can delete it. I'm just grouping these as I work, just for clarity. Obviously, if you would like a more thorough guide to Canvas Workspace, please do remember that I have two full courses on udemy.com. Uh, I will leave a link in the description below the video on YouTube and, of course, a link in the blog post on gentlemancrafter.com. So next up we're going to change the spacing and the corner type and see what difference that makes. Obviously the spacing makes the shadow layer bigger and the corner type, changing it from round to bevel, gives us flattened corners. This is more of a visual style, I'm not aware of any actual benefits. What I would make you aware of though is over on the S and the H, you'll see there's a very fine section. So we'll need to deal with that in a second. First up, I'm gonna deal with these landlocked areas. And I'm doing that using the subtract tool again. Now, whenever you subtract something, it moves the new shape to the top layer, which generally means that uh, the smaller shapes might disappear. So just make sure you've always got the smaller shape on top. Now for that dodgy area on the left, basically I'm entering the node editing mode, selecting those nodes that are causing that line and deleting them. Again, we send the shadow layer to the back and you can use that, do that using keyboard shortcuts or of course over in the layers tab by just clicking and dragging. So there's three shadow styles already. Very similar, but just subtle differences. So it depends on what result you are wanting. And of course, with larger shadow layers, you can make hinged greetings cards as well. For this next one, I'm going to reduce the spacing, change the corner type back to round, and create an open shadow layer. Same issues as before, so I'm just going to delete that tiny bit in the middle of the A and subtract 
the smaller areas from the larger letters. Now what I'm going to do is apply a fill colour, send it to the back of the stack so it shows the text on the front, and then with that group selected, I'm going to select the offset tool again, leave everything set as it was apart from the offset being on the outside only. And then as you can see, we've created a shadow of a shadow. With all of those selected, you can weld those individual shapes together again and apply a fill color. So there you go, you can see we can create multiples. Again, I've got that dodgy bit in the S and the H, so just deleting that. And that's so that the uh, cutting shape doesn't really cause any problems when we come to cut it out on the machine. If you're drawing this, wouldn't really be a problem. Okay, for the next one, if you're using vinyl, you might not want to layer things like with the shadow layer, but you might want an offset shadow to highlight some text. So to do this, what I like to do is create three versions of the same word, align them along the uh, vertical and horizontal axis, then move the bottom one so that I still have the top two, select the bottom one and the next one up, and then subtract. And now what I have is the text on the top, and then basically just the parts that I want to cut out for the shadow. They don't actually go underneath the letters, as you can see. It's just going to cut out the shadow bits. And that basically is great for vinyl because we're not adding double layers. So it's not making areas of your design super thick. It's all one layer of vinyl. Now there's one more style that I would like to show you. And this requires a little more work. So it's not the quick option. We'll start again with just the text and we're going to create four additional layers. You can have more, you can have less. Four seems to work really well for me. I'm going to align them again. And this time I'm basically going to press my shift key and my down and left arrow once. Each time taking away one of the layers from the selection on the layers panel on the right. And I do this by shift click. Then I'm reorganizing them so that the top one is basically top right, if you see what I mean. So you can already see that's great, but I'm going to apply some colors so I can see better. And to be honest, the, the more different the colors are, the better, because it will help you see during the next steps what you need to select. In hindsight, I probably went a bit too similar with the colors here. It makes no difference to what you actually cut out. It's really just what you can see on screen. So if we tried to cut this now and then layer this up, it would be a massive stack of stuff. What we want to do is click on divide. So we've selected everything and clicked on divide in process overlap. Now it's a whole mess, so we've got to fix it. So the first thing that I'm doing is selecting every shape that has a white fill color. Then in the edit tab, I'm welding those together. As you can see, it's all fixed. I'm going to group those and lock that layer. Next up, I'm going to zoom in on one letter. Then with my selection tool, 
I'm going to pre uh, select as many of the parts in one color as I can and then weld and basically I'll continue doing this until all of the parts of that, that uh, single color are welded together as you can see there So I'm going to carry on doing that for each individual color. And you may find that basically some uh, shapes are grouped. So if you're trying to select it and then it's deselecting it, that's possibly why. Make sure you get as much of it as you possibly can as it will involve less tidying later. Some won't even need it because they won't have been split. Now I've done that for each individual letter, so we can see here. And then in the Layers tab, this is what it looks like. So we've got shadow bits throughout. But I do still have some odd bits and pieces. So in order to find out what they are, I simply click on the layer in the Layers tab, and then I can see where it is. Because I know that's part of the W, I'll go and find the corresponding shape and then weld that together. Again, I've got a weird part here, that's part of the A, so I select that, weld it. Again, this one goes with the H, and weld that. As you can see, this is not the quick option, um, but it does give you a very dramatic effect. It's like 70s retro text. Retro, that's the word. And this is where you can see why I said earlier about using very different colors, um, because on the Layers tab on the right, some of them can look very, very similar. Okay, so I think I've got everything there. So what I've done now is ungrouped the white words, uh, white letters even, sent them to the top of the stack, just for visual reference, grouped them and locked them. And now what I'm going to do is basically go through and select all of the shapes of the same color now, as I say, if this was if these were different colors in the layers tab, then it may have been easier to select them. Uh, however, I was struggling at this point to find things that were uh, basically the same. So I started out getting the ones that I could. And then in just a minute, you'll probably see me move over to start selecting things actually on the cutting mat. That's just as easy and in some cases just as quick. The goal of this uh, process is to group everything into the colors that you will be cutting them. So we'll have five colors with this in the end. And basically by putting them in these groups, it means we can send each layer out individually to our cutting machine. And they'll be in the right position to cut and then transfer to your project. And then just as one last step, you can see, I'm just going to turn off a few layers so you can see the difference between the layers. Look out for those tiny little bits, though, that you can see just uh, top right of the word. They can cause you problems with vinyl. Um, you might even want to delete them. They're not super important. Depends what scale you're doing this design at. And on that basis, uh, obviously, once you've done this, and grouped it as a project like this, you can resize it to fit 
whatever you fancy. So if I increase my mat size to 12 by 24, you can see how you can resize this because it is a vector graphic. It will resize everything proportionately and everything will work really well.